You call that thing Sahalanthropus. Where does the name come from? Well, several years ago, an excavation team discovered a hominid skull in the Sahel region. Central Africa. The Southern Sahara. Cypher gave the specimen the name Sahalanthropus. Man of Sahel. And then they covered the whole thing up. Why? They probably wanted to monopolize information about human evolution to have a head start in their genetic research. At least, until they had an idea of what they'd found. It was that big of a discovery, huh? Sahalanthropus was a gracile hominid, estimated to have lived about seven million years ago. What's significant about it is how its skull's foramen magnum faces down. In other words, its spinal column supported its head from underneath. It stood upright. Right. Which would mean Sahalanthropus walked upright three million years before Australopithecus, making it the world's oldest human species. Walking upright. I get it. Hence the name Sahalanthropus for your machine. Walking upright was the decisive difference between our ancestors and other anthropoids. Our brains could get heavier once they were supported by the spinal column. That led to the use of tools and the development of complex communication through language. Only man is capable of this. My creation will be the progenitor of all bipedal weapon platforms. And you did this for Cypher? No, n not at all. Sahalanthropus is the best proof that I never betrayed you guys. What do you mean? The reconstructed Sahalanthropus skull looked exactly like the skull we used as our logo nine years ago in the Caribbean. An army without a nation. Outside the world order. The design was based on Pangaea, the supercontinent that existed 250 million years ago, right? Yeah. When the world was a single landmass. That concept's at the source of our strength. I felt the same way about Sahalanthropus. Sure, I was forced to build it under their orders, but I always wanted to put its technology back in our hands someday. That's the reason I incorporated the old insignia into Sahalanthropus's name. Don't you see? That's how much I was thinking about you guys. Oh, I see, all right. I see someone desperate to cover his ass. You can say whatever you want after the fact. But that skull also symbolizes somebody else. Skull face. Snake, you finally came. Just don't record this, okay? I'm not recording anything. What's this about? What I'm about to say stays between you and me. It's about the weapon to surpass Metal Gear. <sighs> Do you know a researcher by the name of Clark? He works in the biotech industry. Real advanced stuff. His area is bioengineering, but lately, he's also gotten into genetic research. Never heard of him. Well then, what do you know about cloning? <sighs> I think I've heard enough. Hold on, this is important. Cloning lets you create a genetic copy of an organism. You take the nucleus of one of its cells, and you swap it with the nucleus of an unfertilized egg from another member of the same species. They started out working with plants, but since then they've had success with other organisms, including mammals. It's a hot area for a lot of places right now. Corporations, universities, research groups. There's no shortage of scientists out to get famous and patent their work, with morality taking a back seat. Isn't that a little outside your field? It's got nothing to do with my research. But I thought it might be of interest to you. Cloning. And Dr. Clark, I mean. Go on. Now, this is really highly classified stuff. But I've heard that an American biotech company has successfully cloned a human being. What's more, it happened over ten years ago. And the researcher behind it was Dr. Clark. You've really never heard of him? I don't meet many doctors. This Dr. Clark is a complete ghost, even to others in his field. His age, where he comes from, that might not be his real name. And I can't even say for sure he's a he. Clark's employer, ATGC, its company motto is embracing your hopes, preserving talent. What does this have to do with me? Cypher.
Arrival? Dr. Clark works for ATGC, and they have connections to DARPA. Cypher couldn't function without the communications network DARPA's built. Meaning, Cypher has to be a part of the Pentagon. Or at least, the two are joined at the hip. DARPA is a driving force behind human cloning. It's a pretty high priority project for them. And this Dr. Clark? Some say he's a pivotal player in Cypher. But that's not all. Every cell nucleus in an organism contains the genetic information for that organism. Think of it as a blueprint for life. Clark appears to be working on how to decode this information and rearrange it at will. If you could do that, it would mean being able to custom design human beings for specific purposes. Can you believe that? Suppose for a moment that this is all fact. A man of your talents, if your genetic information died with you, that would be a terrible loss for mankind. But what if mankind could preserve you for future generations by cloning you? All right, enough. I get the idea. Look, I know it's inductive reasoning, but this weapon to surpass Metal Gear they're developing in Africa, I believe it's something that uses this new technology. <sighs> Speaking as a fellow scientist, it chills me to the bone. That's rich coming from you. If genes serve as our blueprint, then I wonder if they include an impulse that drives us to tweak the design. Can you imagine that? Genes encoded with information that wants its children to decode it. Is life itself putting the direction of our next evolution in the hands of scientists? I guess it would take some real arrogance to believe that. And yet, it could be what Cypher's after. I think you're barking up the wrong tree. But that was an interesting story. It'd make a good movie. You have to believe me. Where'd you hear all this anyway? Where? I just overheard it in bits and pieces while I was forced to do that research for them. Right. Wait a minute. Look, I, I want to help you. I want to be of service here. I'm risking my life with this. Is that so? Maybe it's time we brought someone else into the conversation. No, not him. Not Ocelot. You can't do this. Fine. Yes, Strangelove was doing AI research in that lab. Why hide that until now? Why? Okay, so what? I wasn't working alone. You've got to understand. You do understand, right? I didn't want to drag her into this. It's my load to bear, alone. So you didn't create the AI intended to drive Sahelanthropus. It was strange, love. Skullface was never in favor of AI control. So naturally, they argued. Strange love, she... She got him angry, and then... He killed her. How? You didn't see it? So you found her inside that pot after the fact. And you just left her body to rot in there. Or perhaps you put her in there afterward. I... I... I asked him not to take her away from me. So she was killed by Skullface, but you asked nicely, and he put her body in the AI pod for you? That's right. Pathetic. You know, we have another idea. That you killed her. What, uh, me? Oh, I couldn't kill her. You killed her and locked her body in the pod. I wouldn't. D don't treat me like one of you. I, I can't just kill anyone whenever I feel like it. I'm a, a, a normal human being. Oh, I see. So you just shut her inside and waited for her to die. I would never do that. What, you mean she killed herself? Yes. She she climbed inside that pod and shut the door. It, it can't be opened from the outside. It, it was suicide. Mm. Suicide, I said. She killed herself. She got in when I wasn't looking and, and suffocated. She'd often try to do things like that. Uh, by the time I realized and opened the door, she wasn't breathing. 
I, I got scared and shut the pod again. I couldn't bring myself to open it back up. That's right. Me? Kill her? What, what is wrong with you? I see. Just tell me one more thing. Haven't you gotten enough today? Okay, okay, I see it's a painful memory. You don't have to answer, just listen to the question. <sighs> you see, we examined her remains. She had a scar on her lower abdomen, a surgical scar. It had been stitched up and had fully healed, meaning it was long before her death. She had a child, didn't she? I... 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 Your child. Where's the kid? How should I know? So there is a child. I've never seen his face. What do you take us for? They took it all. Even my child. I didn't even know he'd been born. I, I lost everything. How old would he be? It's four years since then. And you know it's a boy. Strange Love said so. And his name? We called him Hal. Even though I never saw his face. <laughs> <laughs>